Tony, I've got to start by thanking you very much indeed for joining us on What Matters Globally. I know you're a busy man, so appreciate your time. It is much appreciated. And, and to that end, uh, I just want to dive straight in, if we can. We're obviously focusing a lot on the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Let's focus on number nine, if we can. It aims to build resilient infrastructure, uh, promote sustainable industrialization, and also, uh, all importantly, foster innovation. How, how do you think that the airline industry will support or could support those goals? So I think goal number nine is really important. Um, the airline industry has got a huge responsibility, but of course it's circular. Everybody's got a part to play in this. Uh, from the consumer, the person who buys the ticket, the airline who delivers the obligation, the manufacturers that produce the aircraft, but also the governments and the regulators. So there's a whole ecosystem of people who've got a part to play in this. But the common thrust, of course, is innovation. Um, there's no copyright on good ideas. Uh, the world's full of them. And the trick to this one is to be able to align as many of them as possible to a common objective. And in ob obviously in aviation, that's how we become more efficient and we reduce emissions. And there's no cop out for the airlines, quite the opposite. We've got a really big part to play in this. And in some ways, we've got to be able to facilitate the way in which those other parties come together. So goal number nine front and centre. <laughs> in terms of sustainable industrialisation, um, I mean, obviously, one of the, the key requirements of that is that airlines need to find a way to meet what is a growing and developing demand for air travel to reduce emissions. That's one of the goals that has been set out. Um, again, what do you feel that Corsia, the compliance standard, and the goals from um, IATA that have been set out. Are, are they setting a high enough bar in terms of those all important emissions reductions, or could more be done? Well, I'm not probably here to challenge whether the bar that's already been set is high enough. Mm. But what I will say is I think we can all do a lot more. And more importantly, we absolutely have to do a lot more. Um, the consuming public over time will have even greater demands on the way in which it selects how they'll travel based upon the sustainable footprint that it represents. Thought leaders in this space will become the leaders because it won't just be about environmental sustainability, it will also be about corporate sustainability. You won't be able to have the latter in commercial aviation without the former. Mm. So we've taken this extremely seriously. We like to think that we're a bit of a thought leader in this space, in particular with the Greenliner program. So we've been deploying an innovation testbed, something that's out there in order to bring smart ideas from the industry, from entrepreneurs, from SMEs, from lots of different areas uh, within that circular proposition that I described before to get better performance in the air. And there's lots of fantastic examples already where we've made great strides forward. But of course, this is a marathon. We all need to be in it for the long term. Mm. One thing that you have been in for a long term is, of course, um, embracing technology, cutting edge technology. Um, we see and we hear a lot about promising aviation technologies, but I suppose we have to cut to the quick and many seem quite a long way away from being commercially available across the board. So I don't know whether you and your position and given your expertise can give us some examples of, of technology um, that you feel that airlines can implement today to, to make the industry again that all important, more sustainable moving forward. So of course, back to innovation, comes in all shapes and sizes. So I have to say on a personal level, I like some of the little ones because if you add lots of little ones together, of course, they do contribute massively. But let me start actually with the fleet choice that we've made. Uh, 787 Dreamliner is widely acknowledged as being the most sustainable aircraft mm. in commercial aviation today. And of course, Airbus A350. So we have the privilege of the two best performers 
To put that into perspective, they're in excess of 20% more fuel efficient than some of her craft that were of equivalent scale in the last generation. So I guess I can kind of start at that level. Mm. But then you get to things that are widely talked about and out there, such as sustainable aviation fuels. I'm proud that today we hold the world record with the longest flight uh, on over 50% sustainable aviation fuel. Having said that, it's between two and three times more expensive than regular fuel. So is this an economical solution today? No, it's not. Is, however, this a big part of a way forward in the future? Almost certainly it will be. But then you get into the mid-size initiatives and the smaller ones. So with mid-size, we do a lot of work with artificial intelligence, machine learning, looking at how condensation trails are generated at altitude. How do you predict temperature, air pressure, weather patterns in the way in which you flight plan in order to reduce condensation trails? There's massive opportunity in working with regulators and air traffic control systems to be able to reduce the amount of fuel burn because of inefficient routing, particularly in densely populated places like Western Europe. But let me go back to the little ones. Mm. The things that we can all relate to is, you know, eliminating single-use plastic, making things lighter. You know, we all remember the days we used to get into an aircraft, the seat we saw in front of us was filled full of magazines <laughs> and pieces of paper. And of course, think about it, it was weight, but it was also quite often produced in a less than sustainable fashion. So they're in one sense little things, but they're actually big things in the way in which they contribute to this. And I think therefore, the challenge that's with us is to acknowledge that it will be a combination of all of the above and many things that we've not even really thought through at this stage, because there's no one silver bullet. Mm. You and I um, are sat here in 2021, kindly, you've, you, you're speaking to us uh, here in 2021. I wonder if we can uh, look ahead, if we can look into our crystal ball at the moment and predict the future, because what about 10 years from now, let's say 2031, how different do you feel the industry will look and be as a result of just a few of the innovations that you've been talking about there? Well, against standards that were set uh, for Etihad, where we've signed into it to be carbon neutral by 2050 and to be 50% reduced by 2035, mm. we're well ahead of those targets already. Now, that doesn't make us in any way overconfident, but I think it's a clear illustration if you show thought leadership and you focus on this subject matter, there are many things that can make a difference. The risk, however, is it starts to run out of steam. Why do I say that? In 10 years time, we'll probably still be flying the same generation of aircraft and engines that we're flying today because the product life cycle within this sector doesn't change that quickly. And Dreamliner and 350 with the engines that we've got there are very much at the forefront right now. They still will be in a decade. Mm. I think fuels will have come on an awful long way. Mm. I think the smarter route planning that I referred to earlier could probably contribute up to 15% further fuel efficiency and the corresponding reduction in CO2. That's definitely a big win, but we'll need to work with regulators and air traffic controllers. I think the combination of little things that I referred to, mm. that shouldn't be underestimated because that's always the area where you can surprise yourself if you work hard enough. But finally, I think there's going to be an awful lot of operational breakthrough technology, particularly in how we continue to reduce weight and we continue to make sure that what we do as well is give people the optionality of how they want to engage with us. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see a lot more offer from the likes of Etihad and others for green loyalty programs, mm. the way in which you can elect to offset in how you engage with Etihad Guest, which is our loyalty program, as the way in which also you can get involved in the ticket acquisition process. So already we do a lot of carbon offsetting. 
The green liner that I mentioned before has been offset all of this year by us buying into a forestation programme in Tanzania that offsets around 70,000 tonnes of CO2 a year. That's not in one dimension a solution, but it's part of how we solve this puzzle. Mm. So in 10 years time, I think we'll continue to make amazing progress. Why? This problem's not going to go away. There are people out there who are as passionate as we are in cracking it, and mankind is brilliant at doing that. I can I can feel that passion, um, and, and 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 to that end, you know, as a thought leader within the industry and the head of an organisation that was respected for leading from the front in in the form of Etihad, I wonder if I could ask for your sort of experience with with other industries. When you look at other industries, and I'm not pointing fingers at any singular one. Do you see any of the models that you've spoken about so eloquently there for sustainable industrialization and innovation, which the, yourselves and the airline industry as a whole have adopted or might, could, or could, could other industries learn from what you're doing and have achieved so far? So I think perhaps the first part of the question, um, there's lots of good examples out there, I believe. And, you know, in decades gone by, when governments, for example, have been trying to get a different energy mix, yeah. uh, slightly less reliance on traditional power sources such as coal-fired power stations, slight reduction on gas and so on and so forth, more renewable uh, sources have been incentivized. So even for the domestic consumer, you know, they've almost been incentivized perhaps for solar panels, or increasing levels of insulation and so on and so forth. So I think there's an important policy and regulatory point here in terms of what I would describe as the carrot and the stick. Mm. Um, the stick, of course, being taxation, that dreaded word. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, I think the carrot can quite often be far more effective mm. in changing the way in which people's behaviours elect to make decisions on how they purchase and the products that they enjoy. So I look at the energy industry and I've seen quite a few very positive initiatives in that regard. But of course, something else we can probably relate to, you know, it wasn't that long ago when nobody had ever heard of Tesla. Yep. Um, you know, the idea of, you know, uh, electric cars uh, was around because many people, maybe it's an electric golf buggy, yep. but probably never saw the idea of them driving 300 kilometers or 100 kilometers an hour as a daily proposition and of course here we are today with some incredible uh, developments in that space and probably over the next decade a lot more to come mm. so i think that should give us the confidence that again once we've got objectives and goals that are clearly laid down and this goal here goal number nine there says innovate your way to success there's lots of good examples out there that others have done the same mm. And just finally, I wonder if we can sort of uh, do a vice versa on that, flipping on its head to a certain degree, because I think you're right. You know, you mentioned energy just very quickly there, but equally, so many other industries can look to aviation, look to ETA, look to what you guys have achieved and take solace from that. But are there areas that aviation, the airline industry as a whole, um, there are certainly things that they are doing well at the moment, but could you benefit from the the knowledge, the innovation of other sectors? Are we going to see more of that moving forward, the, the cross-pollination of innovation across sectors and industries? So I think almost certainly yes. Um, what do I think aviation does well that can be shared with others? I think there's an obsession with every last line of cost, and there has to be because aviation is notoriously a very fine margin business and therefore the dividing line between success and failure is in the detail. Sustainability is driven by you know our absolute values around how we support this planet and the next generation and the generations after but let me also be clear there is an element of red-blooded capitalism about this. It's about commercial sustainability as well because the fuel bill is by far and away the biggest single cost in running a commercial airline. We reduce our fuel bill, it makes a big difference to us. So everybody's a winner. So it aligns objectives, it gives absolute clarity, it gives purpose, 
And it also allows, therefore, that kind of energy around collecting all shapes and sizes of innovations. Greenliner, therefore, is a test bed. It's a go-to place to do it. But, you know, it's also in educational establishments, the entrepreneurs, the SMEs, there's lots of people out there in different industries that then see the opportunity of where does my concept, where does my idea have a go-to place in a parallel sector or a parallel industry that could have an application as well. And I think particularly the example I used before, mm. machine learning, artificial uh, intelligence mm. in being able to predict the way in which you optimize a flight, the way in which you can predict your flight plan the way in which you can predict weather patterns and therefore burn less fuel in avoiding them. All of these areas which were developed in you know, commercial spaces for different applications have very quickly found their way into other ways of supporting this objective. And that's what I think gives us this underlying confidence that humanity can beat this one. Tony, oh, we're going to leave it at that. You've given us so much of your time. Really appreciate you for your, your insight, your expertise, and really appreciate you giving your time to what matters globally. Very important subject, and we thank you very much indeed for joining us.